Hello again, it's Priscilla Batzell in Spring Hill, Florida at Expressionist Art Studio Gallery in the backyard with a recently used pan of colors. Still moist enough for me to use again. A 12 by 24 inch pre-primed black canvas. Even though it's hot out here, it's very humid, so I'm hoping that my colors won't dry. That is a iridescent deep turquoise that they don't make anymore right now, but I wish they would. And maybe if somebody ever hears of that product by uh, Plaid or Folk Art, please let me know. That is a color shifting, it used to be called minty green. I don't know anymore because I think I saw it the other day and they changed the name. This is a silver that was probably from Arteza but could have been from anything. I'm going to do both silver and gold in here and it's still not coming out any better than it did last time. And I cleaned that tip. <laughs> oh, life is all about cleaning the tips of bottles out for me. I think I'm going to... Yes, look at that. That's quite the plug. Now we have some silver. I'm going to put some black enamel in because it's enamel acrylic and any amount of it that I add in winds up being a catalyst for the rest. I'm going to use a whole bunch of purples and I think I'm going to finish with some gold. I'm going to use some of the, some of the nice, really, <laughs> maybe I'm not. Let's make sure that's really shaken up and that I'm not shedding paint particles everywhere, which is pretty much par for the course with me. That is not a metallic, but it's okay because it's still a good color. This is the stuff. These are the threads that you have to take out of your bottles. Because if you don't, they wind up loosening themselves when you check, and then they go into the tips. Not my favorite thing. Okay, I know I cleaned this out. So that's DecoArt Americana 24 karat gold. And I think I'm going to throw a little turquoise in here because I like turquoise. And what I did last time, I didn't save the negative space that I liked. And I want to try and save some negative space. And we'll see how that works in a moment or two. What else? What else? I think some copper. And when I force it down, it tends to make cells. Did I put Prussian Blue in there? Because I can't remember. I know Prussian Blue makes cells with almost everything. So I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to grab my black. I kind of want to make my sky first again. So that's just a combination of Artist Loft and black uh, Onyx Black from Walmart. I'm going to grab a spatula out of my drying rack. I think I'm going to need more paint. This time I'm going to put some along the top so I have some reason to think that when I do my my attempt at northern lights again that I'll get some color over the top, although probably not. <laughs> I don't think it matters that much to tell you the truth because I'm making a sky this is my OXO omelette turning spatula. I'm always telling everybody about this. This is usually the best paint spreading tool I know of. I'm just going to clean it off right on the end. And whatever happens to go over, I'm going to rub in with my fingers. There we go. Now I'm really tempted to have, I had really solid, solid, you'll see them eventually sometime. A solid line of northern lights and I want to do them much less solidly and I want to put some brighter color in there and that brighter color would be the berry. I want to put it lower because when I put it all the way up I wound up with a loop like that. <laughs> so if I can avoid it this time. So that's good. I have no idea exactly what I'm doing, but I do know that when I start doing it, my spatula blends things pretty nicely. And last but not least, some more of the minty green. All right, here goes nothing. I'm going to take a chance.
let all that paint go right over the edge right there. We've got beautiful cells. Really like that magenta pink, which is a combination of a whole bunch of magentas. Okay, so we've got some really, really nice cells happening. Nice, nice northern lights. I'm going to clean off the colors that are on my spatula by just running the edge of the spatula right down the top of the canvas and then running my fingers in them. I'm hoping that that won't be a problem. How do I like that? And go right back up again. Right over the top edge. I don't want to get rid of that green. I like that green. I think some silver would work well in there. Would it? Let's see. Yeah, I like the silver. It really looks like lights. I'm trying to be as random as possible. Oh no! <laughs> hey, at least it came back. I thought the green was going to disappear if I did that. And it still looks pretty good. And it covered my top edge. And that piece of dried paint can go away. I need to clean off my spatula because I don't have another one. And I might want one right now, in fact. So what I didn't do last time, I'm going to try and do this time. Is I'm going to give myself a good layer of black paint. I'm going to use the, the bead of it that I push up with my spatula right into the edge of that, which makes a pretty good land mass. I'm hoping that my colors that I picked, that I'm going to put my shovel in in a minute, are dark enough. Let that go right over the edge again. I wanted a more uneven landscape too. Just use that all the way along. I want to see what happens. If I run the black up and down. Makes a slightly more interesting pattern for me. I've got enough paint on my spatula so I can wipe it right off on the bottom edge. Even that drip that dripped that tried to escape, I got it. <laughs> Alright. Well, I don't know about you, but that looks done to me. <laughs> it's not gonna keep me from doing anything else though. I'll be over here quickly cleaning off my fingertips. I really just want to leave that, oh boy. I'm thinking, I'm totally thinking. All right, as much as I love it, I'm gonna do what I said I was gonna do. I'm gonna grab a shovel, I'm gonna grab my colors. Maybe I'll grab less of them. I'm going to have to do another painting. I hope I have enough time. Okay, so now all that is left is for me to decide to not spill my paint over here, please. What else, if anything else, I want to add in.
and how much of that negative space is going to be unaffected and if I'm going to do any tilting. I really have a lot of paint left over here. <laughs> okay then. We'll do a little tilting. We'll do a little tilting and here is my edge catcher. Oh, there's not much of that. Okay then. Let's just go down, up, over. Everything's pointed toward an edge catcher. Upside down, down again. I keep forgetting I've got a stretcher bar on the back here. Right upside down. Hard tilt. Let it all go. When it's really flowing, then we're going to tip it down again. I'm going to leave my black spaces in there. I don't. It doesn't even look like I'm getting a whole lot of runoff. To tell you the truth. But since I'm getting some, I can use it to cover my bottom edge, which you can see right there. And then I can move it down. Even that's a really long canvas. Cover some more of my bottom edge. So how do I like that? I like it a lot. <laughs> I like it a lot. I like the black. I really, really did. But I'm okay with this. So it's the new and improved version. And any paint that's on my edge catcher, I will scrape off with my Princeton Art Tool Catalyst Spatulas. Available on the Amazon link under the link tree that's right under the video. Where you can also find my email address right under there if you're interested in making a purchase of an artwork or inquiring about a lesson. That's the place to do it. I can't be too too fussy about the in, indiscriminate little black marks here and there because it's definitely an abstract artwork. If I have anything that I want to drag out, I may certainly do that with a little added skewer action. And if I really wanted to get down and get funky, I could also use a straw. But I don't think that it needs to have much of anything other than maybe a little bit of the paint from the edge catcher. The rest of it can pretty much stay on there. All right. I love you guys. There's almost 88,000 of you. And uh, that splooge in the middle is bugging me. So I'm going to see if I can pull up this little tiny of acetate. Oh, you know what? That's a paint particle. My tweezers no longer tweeze. They've got too much paint stuck between them. I think I got it. All right. Well, that's a meteor shower right there. I love you guys. I will see you anon. This is Priscilla Batsell in Spring Hill, Florida at Expressionist Art Studio Gallery saying thank you for sharing my videos. I really appreciate it. Thank you for liking my videos with a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. You are very kind with your comments and your compliments. Thank you very much. If you are inclined to watch more videos, you can find over 1,400 of them on my channel and on all playlists and then look for created playlists and they'll be organized by genre or by the hundred. I got wonderful little cells. I got to stop messing with them. I got to stop messing, period. But I'm liking everything I've got. Even the part I mess with is okay. So I will see you guys anon. Check the end screens in the last 20 seconds for the exhibition video that shares with you what the prizes are for the monthly drawing. And all that's required is that you will be a studio contributor through, through PayPal. I think I'm going to forget about Patreon pretty quick. But um, check your subscriptions. Watch the videos longer. That'll help me out. Shop the Amazon link at no added cost to you. I really appreciate that. Check out Facebook groups. Expressionist Art Studio Gallery Appreciation Group is for students. And also a good place to find today's video. Uh, my community board is a good place to ask to see something. If you want to see a dry artwork, you can. Yeah, I got some stuff that's bugging me down here. I didn't see it until I was upside down.
I don't think it's going to hurt anything changing it at all. I got my negative space. I'm happy. I love you guys. I'll see you anon. Bye for now. Priscilla out.